We are really, really excited about Australian Pink Floyd coming to SPAC August 18th. Have you guys played here before? Uh, yes, I do believe so. Yes, a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's a great venue, awesome place to, uh, to see an Australian Pink Floyd show. Yeah, it's a great one. Great setup for it. You guys have been described as the gold standard by the Times. What, what does that mean to you, Jason? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a great description, I suppose. I mean, we've been doing it for a long time, mm-hmm. and we've been working at our craft for many, many years, like over 31 years now. Um, and I suppose we, we, we were sort of like started out when tribute bands were just starting out. So I think uh, we made a bit of an impact on the scene, and I think people tend to compare themselves to us if they're trying to do the same thing. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. 31 years ago, you guys started the, how did, how did it come about that you guys became Australian Pink Floyd? Well, you know, we started out basically as a, just a bunch of guys who liked Pink Floyd. We got together. Um, I mean, tribute bands were a new thing at the mm-hmm. time and I just joined with my keyboards and I thought this is an interesting thing to do and I liked the music. <laughs> so we just got together in a little room and played music for fun, basically. And uh, here we are 31 years later doing it again. It's just surprising how successful it has been yeah it's absolutely huge what what path were you on before you took this path were you were you doing something different completely uh i was studying at university i was doing um biological sciences and and this was just like a hobby <laughs> wow yeah it's a different thing altogether. <laughs> how things change don't they <laughs> oh definitely yeah did you ever have the opportunity to see pink floyd live uh, I saw them at Earl's Court in in mm-hmm. London um, back in the early 90s. Wow. Um, it was a fantastic experience, very emotional. Yeah. Now, when you guys approach... Now, obviously, you know a lot of the catalog. I'm sure you don't know every single song of the catalog, but you probably know the majority. When you approach a song that maybe you haven't played before or one that you don't play that often, how how do you approach it? How do you learn it as the keyboard player? Well, I mean, first of all, we listen to the song. We might listen to, you know, standard recordings, or if there's lots of bootlegs, we'll listen to several of mm-hmm. them, depending on what version we're going to play. And then I'll, I'll study the keyboard parts and learn the chords, and then thinking, right, this is a special sound. How do I get that sound? And then, and then once we've done our own homework, then we get together and we rehearse it as a band. Um, and, then, and then we might tweak things. And then, of course, we'll, and then we get our production rehearsals where we work with it with a light. So it's, you know, it's like several stages in the process of bringing a song to uh, production. Tell me about the tour right now. You guys are doing All That You Love tour. Um, what does that mean? Well, it, I mean, that, that's a lyric from Dark Side of the Moon. Mm-hmm. We thought it was a good, good, good name for, a, you know, doing all the great songs of Pink Floyd. Um, I mean, we do a lot from Dark Side of the Moon, The Wall. We do some old stuff. We do some newer stuff. I mean, it's a great set um, and a great light show. It, it, you know, it's a great show. It, uh, it's a greatest hits show, is this tour? It, essentially, yes. Yeah. You guys have done album tours before, right? Where you've done, you know, sides of an album or a whole album? Yes, yes. I mean, we are doing quite a, a substantial chunk of albums on mm-hmm. this tour, um, but it is basically a greatest hits, but we are doing, like, great segments of the albums. Is there a is there a Pink Floyd song that uh, for you personally, when you know it's coming up in the set list, you're like, I can't wait to play this song. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it can vary from year to year. You know, <laughs> um, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 there, are the, there, are, there are songs there that I, I, I love to play. I mean, Obscured by Clouds or Shining You Crazy Diamond or mm-hmm. Echoes. You know, things like that. Shine On You Crazy Diamond is such a great song and, and one that you don't hear people even mention that often. That is uh, such, a, such a great song and such a long song to play in concert. It is. I mean, a lot of Pink Floyd songs are pretty long, but that's a pretty substantial song. But it is a great song. I mean, the way it opens with that mysterious opening and that mm-hmm, kind of bluesy mm-hmm. period, you know, it, it, it's a great song. So um, everybody knows the story, if they know anything about Australian Pink Floyd, that you guys had the opportunity to play at David Gilmore's 50th birthday party. How did that come about? Well, we, we, were, just, um, you know, we, we were just doing a show in, in London, um, and, and uh, I think they just finished his like, Division Bell tour. Mm-hmm. And we were, we were just finished our show, and we, we were sitting back having a beer backstage, and there was a knock on the back on the door. And the door opened, and it was David Gilmore. We wow. said, oh, my God, you know, it's David Gilmore. <laughs> and he came around, he had a beer, we had a photo taken, um, and we were invited to play, you know, his birthday party a couple of years later. So, you know, that's how it came about. Really. Wow. That had to be just a, a mind-blowing moment. 
it, it was fantastic. I mean, we couldn't believe it. You know, we were, we were sort of looking away all these pubs and things, and then, then, then he comes along and says hello. It was great. And a nice guy, too. As he oh, came yeah, in. he's a lovely guy, yeah. It, it's cool because uh, as I'm sure when you started your tribute band, you guys probably thought, I wonder what Pink Floyd thinks about this. We, we did think about that a lot. So when he came along and said, you know, hello, it, was, it, it felt good, definitely. It was like, uh, you know, the nod of the hat to say, good job, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very cool. When you're not out uh, touring the world as Australian Pink Floyd, Jason, what do you uh, what do you what do you do in your off time? What do you what, uh, what are your passions? Well, I mean, we all do different things. I mean, sometimes we actually do. I mean, I'm doing a little bit of a blues band with some friends, and cool. other guys do do other musical stuff. You, you know, so we, we we try and do other things when we're we're off our downtown, but we're a downtime but we are pretty busy with with this so we don't have a lot of chance to do i'm sure job. i'm sure now do you live in australia or do you live I, elsewhere I, I currently live in the uk okay all right so a little more centralized to get around yeah to yeah all the i mean tours. it's easy to get to europe and stuff i mean we've got we've just done a european tour recently so mm-hmm. it makes it a lot easier to i'm do sure that. i'm sure um and i i read that you had the opportunity to play with another member of pink floyd uh rick wright uh years ago uh, yeah, I mean, it was at the party, uh, and you know, he came on stage and he asked if he could play the keyboard. And he he says, you know, he's, he was he was extremely polite, and he mm-hmm. said, oh, "I'll play the Hammond, and you play the had the synthesizers." <laughs> and we played comfortably numb, and he was there. Well, I was there next to him with his shoulders moving wildly to the music. Right, it was a fantastic memory. And and I'm, did you have trouble focusing on what you were doing because you were probably watching him? A little bit. I was distracted because I couldn't believe it was, it was Rick Wright playing my keyboard. That's pretty incredible. Do you, I, w- I think I would have had that keyboard shellacked or something and put up on a shelf and you know never touched it again after that. Well, I do have it in special storage, actually. <laughs> that's good, see? I knew that's what, where you would go with that. So tell me about the rest of the band um, and what we can expect on, uh, on August 18th. Well, you know, we've, we've got a, it's a, it's a ten-piece band there. It's a big band, you know. It's, it's you know, the, the core band with the guitars and the bass, the, the drums and everything, but with sax players and backing vocalists. Uh, we've got special effects, lights, big, big project, projections on a circular mm-hmm. screen. We've got these inflatable teacher, inflatable kangaroo, lasers. You know, it's a Pink Floyd show, basically. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it before, and it is truly amazing. I don't think people understand the scope and the scale of it until they've actually had an opportunity to see it. And pretty much everybody walks out and goes, oh, my God, I just saw Pink Floyd. <laughs> well, that, that's what we're trying to do, you know, to give that experience. Because, you know, it's a, you know to see a Pink Floyd show is, is a complete experience. It's mm-hmm. the music, it's the lights, and it's a very emotional experience. And, sure. you know, they come around, they, they just feel it uplifted by it. Absolutely, absolutely. Any uh, crazy stuff that's happened to you on tour? Any uh, any pranksters in the band or any crazy stuff that's happened while you've been on stage? Well, you know, things do happen occasionally. I mean, I remember once we had to stop a show because uh, some guy in the audience, his wife was having a uh, was it having a baby. Oh, my gosh. We had to, stop, we had to announce it. It <laughs> said, can, can please, Mr. So-and-so, go to hospital because your wife's having a baby. Wow. And there was a big cheer in the audience. <laughs> And what song do you follow that with? Well, yeah, the next one in the set list, I <laughs> yeah, suppose. You just, you're not going <laughs> to go off script at that point. You just keep going, right? Well, that's it. I mean, you know, we, we have to, we do keep to a script. Sure. But, you know, sometimes things do happen and you have to stop the show for occasionally. But, you know, that's only rarely happens. So. Wow, that's amazing. That's, a, that's one for the memory books right there. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> Jason, it's a pleasure talking to you. I'm excited to see you guys here. Uh, it's been a few years since I've had the opportunity to see you, and uh, uh, you guys just put on an amazing show. And I know we've been giving away tickets, and our listeners are incredibly excited to see you. Great outdoor venue, and uh, safe travels while you get here, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Have a great day. Uh, okay, bye. Bye.